Welcome to another JK Adventure video. This video will cover the installation of the Magnuson Supercharger on this 2008 Jeep Wrangler JK. The first step in the installation process is to flash your computer and send the file to Magnuson so they can create the proper tune for your vehicle. Please refer to the instructions for how to do this. We have lots of things to disconnect. First off, disconnect and remove the battery. This can be easy or difficult depending on how many wires you have connected to the battery to run aftermarket accessories. After you have removed the gas cap to release any pressure in the fuel system, unplug the IAT sensor as seen here. I also loosen the clamps that secure the air tube to the throttle body and the air box. And disconnect the air tube from the throttle body. Disconnect the PCV vent tube that runs between the valve cover and the air box and set it aside for later use. Remove the air box top and its bottom by pulling straight up. Disconnect the power from the fuse center. Depress the four locking clips and lift the fuse center off of the mounting posts. Disconnect all seven electrical plugs and remove the fuse center. This will definitely be used again, so put it in a safe place. It is also a good idea to mark the plugs and fuse center so you know which plugs go where when reconnecting everything. Disconnect the EVAP sensor. Remove both ends of the EVAP tube on the passenger side of the engine and set it aside. Disconnect the electrical connection of the harness on the battery side near the back of the battery tray. Pull the EVAP sensor off of the mounting post and set it aside. Remove the bolts from the power steering fluid reservoir and move it out of the way. Remove the four bolts and three nuts holding the battery tray to the fender and firewall. Pry the wire harness trees from the battery tray. Pull the battery tray out of the vehicle. After you remove the grill, pry the two connectors from their holes. Drill these same holes out to 3 8 inch. Insert the rib nuts into the holes. They may need a little convincing. After you have removed the plastic drip pen, which is below the radiator, measure 4 inches over from the driver's side and drill a 1.5 inch hole as shown. Also drill the hole in the bottom and connect the holes. Clean the intercooler pump mounting bracket with its alcohol and then apply a 2 inch strip of adhesive backed rubber to each one of the long ends. Also press the provided nuts into the brackets as shown. Test fit the intercooler in its intended location. The lock washers are used between the intercooler and the rib nuts to keep the rib nuts from spinning during installation. Reinstall the drip pan using the stock plastic push pins. The intercooler pump brackets utilize the provided bolts and spacers as shown. The short side of the brackets are then placed over the cross frame support and tightened down. Cut a 6 inch section of 3 quarter inch hose and connect it to the lower barb on the heat exchanger using a spring clamp. The instructions are very specific about where to use the spring clamp and where to use a worm gear clamp. Insert the heat exchanger back into place guiding the hose through the opening in the drip tray. Connect that hose to the intercooler pump as shown using another spring clamp. Cut the 4 inch by 36 inch by 3 quarter inch 90 degree elbow hose to leave 1.5 inch on the short end and guide it from the driver's side engine compartment angled down to the pump where it will be attached with a worm gear clamp. Plug the Magnuson wiring harness into the pump. Remove the bolts from the coil mounting bracket on the driver's side of the vehicle. Use the provided bolts and spacers to install the reservoir mounting bracket over the coil pack. Because of the location of my compressor, it was necessary to modify the reservoir bracket to relocate the reservoir closer to the coil pack. Prior to mounting the reservoir on the bracket, it is helpful to install the hose first. Cut the short leg of the supplied J-hose to 1.5 inches in length and connect it to the rear reservoir hose bar. Cut the other end of the hose to 7 inches. This short hose gets connected to the hose that you just connected to the pump using the provided hose mender using two spring clamps. Now attach the reservoir to its mounting bracket. The next few steps are a challenge to videotape because of the tight area in which they are done. The task is to install pins in the crank pulley. The first step in this process is to remove the crank pulley bolt. Install the provided drill guide using the provided bolt and drill two holes using the drill guide. Drill to the point where the flutes of the drill bit have just disappeared into the drill guide and blow the holes out to remove debris. Now loosen the drill guide, rotate it 90 degrees and align the other two holes with the ones you just drilled. Use the bit to hold it in place and re-tighten the bolt. Use the reaming bit to ream out the two holes. Remove the bolt and drill guide and place a bead of the provided green Loctite on the crank pins and place them into the holes. Use a nail set or drift to set them fully. Replace the stock crank bolt and torque it to 40 foot-pounds. Disconnect the throttle body control plug from the throttle body. Unbolt the throttle body and set it aside for reinstallation. 
Disconnect the PCV vent tube from between the intake manifold and the driver's side valve cover. Remove the EGR tube at the front of the intake and the other end from the passenger side head. The easiest way to get to these bolts is through the wheel well. Remove the mounting bracket bolt from the back of the head and throw it away. This will not be reused. Pull out the red pin and disconnect the MAP sensor plug. Disconnect both ends of the hose which runs from the brake booster to the hose barb at the rear of the intake manifold. This hose will not be reused. Remove the fuel line safety clip and use the provided fuel line removal tool to remove the fuel line section between the barb on the fuel manifold and the hard barb near the back of the passenger side of the engine. This is a very simple thing to do as shown here. Then cover the hose end with the provided cap. Now to do the same thing on the other fuel line connector. Remove the bolts holding the top of the intake manifold to the intake manifold runners. Carefully remove the intake manifold, trying not to dislodge any dirt which may fall into the ports. I used a vacuum to remove as much dirt as possible from around the ports. Then wipe the surfaces off with alcohol. Place painter's tape over the ports to prevent anything from falling into them. Disconnect all of the injector connectors by pulling up on the red tabs, squeezing the lock tabs, and pulling the plugs off the injectors. If the red tab comes off without the plug, it can easily be placed back in position. Pull the injector wiring harness mounting tabs free from the mounting holes. Remove the bolts holding the fuel line to the manifold. Remove the fuel manifold by pulling it straight up and slide it out from under the wiring harness. Pull the lock clips free and replace the factory injectors with the new Magnuson injectors. Re-engage the locking clips. Put the fuel manifold back into place and push the injectors back in their holes. The manifold will snap back into place. Reconnect all of the fuel injector plugs and bolt the manifold back down. Remove the clamp securing the heater hoses on the passenger side of the engine compartment. Cut the existing EVAP tube on the passenger side behind the engine three bends from the EVAC solenoid connector and two inches past that bend. Use a heat gun or hair dryer to heat the bare end of the tube and insert the provided coupling. Be very careful as the tube and coupling will get very hot. Gloves are a great idea. Place some three inch sections of wire loom over the heater hoses by the firewall to protect them. Here is the hose which you will guide behind the motor next to the firewall and connect to the brake booster. Remove the o-rings from the stock intake manifold ports and clean and inspect them. Place a bead of the provided looper plate on the o-rings and insert them into the mating port grooves on the supercharger manifold. Insert the provided grommet into the hole below the intercooler hose barbs. Remove the OEM IAT sensor and place a bead of looper plate on the o-ring and press shown. shown. Lubricate the o-ring of the provided map sensor with looper plate and install it in the rear of the supercharger manifold. We thought it would be easier to measure and cut this EVAP solenoid tube at this point in the process. After holding the solenoid in the, its approximate location on the bottom of the new battery box, we trimmed it and installed it on the barbed fitting. Now remove the tape protecting the ports and with the help of a friend, guide the supercharger manifold into position. The fuel line needs to be routed through the cavity between the inlet tubes and the support frame. Be careful that the o-rings do not come loose. Reinstall the eight manifold bolts and torque them down in a crisscross pattern in multiple steps. The back two bolts on the passenger side are quite a challenge to get to, and if you have someone with slender hands help you with this part, you will avoid a lot of frustration. Install the 5 8 inch breather hose on the hose bar below the supercharger plenum as shown here. As you can see, the hose has been guided around the back of the supercharger and then to the front. The gas line can now be replaced. The OEM hose will just push back into place. Pull on it to make sure it will not come apart. Reinstall the locking clip. Reconnect the IAT harness plug to the IAT sensor on the supercharger assembly. Cut the short end of the 4 inch by 18 inch 3 quarter 90 degree elbow to leave 1 inch on as measured on the inside of the curve. Connect the short end to the driver's side hose bar on the supercharger and secure with a spring clamp. The other end gets connected to the reservoir and is secured by a warm gear clamp. Cut the short end of the provided 4 inch by 60 inch by 90 degree elbow hose pro provided to leave 2 inches on the short end as measured on the inside of the curve. Connect this end to the other hose barb on the supercharger and secure with a spring clamp. Guide the other end of this hose to the heat exchanger, cut it to length, and secure it to the upper hose barb with a spring clamp. Secure the heat exchanger with the two bolts as shown here. Reinsert the wiring harness trees back into their holes. Cut the OEM PCV vent hose to length 
just before the turn. Cut a 3 quarter inch hose secured to the hose barb shown, guide it towards the driver's side of the vehicle, and connect them together using the provided hose mender, secure with spring clamps. This is what it should look like when you are done. Here is a shot of the EGR tube with the provided hose section installed. Connect it with a spring clamp to the remaining hose barb on the bottom of the supercharger as shown here. And connect the other end to the valve on the passenger side using the supplied gasket. This is much easier to get to, make that only possible if you want to see what you are doing if you remove the fender liners. Connect the free end of the hose which is attached to the brake booster to the inside hose barb on the bottom of the supercharger on the passenger side. Connect the leftover 16 inch piece of 3 8 inch hose to the remaining hose barb. Remove the factory locking clip from the EVAP solenoid by prying out on the locking tab. Install the provided EVAP fitting on the solenoid. Here is where we are at so far. The passenger side of the engine compartment is ready for the battery box. Remove the power distribution holder from the OEM battery tray. Use a screwdriver to remove the four nut clips. Also remove the rubber grommets from the battery tray. Insert the nut clips onto the Magnuson battery tray as shown. Place the new battery tray into position, being careful not to pinch any electrical harnesses. Here are a few shots of it in place. Use the previously removed bolts and nuts to attach the new battery box. Loosely install the fuse tray to the new battery box using the OEM bolts. Slide the tray forward as much as possible before tightening in place. Separate the EVAP plug from the white fuse block connector to give it more length. Reconnect the wiring harness near the back of the passenger side and slide the trees back into their mounts. Reconnect all of the fuse center blocks and lock them down with the integrated clamps. Here is the fuse center back in the OEM tray with the locking tabs engaged. Slide the EVAP solenoid onto the posts on the bottom of the battery tray. Connect the end of the EVAP solenoid control plug, the EVAP tube, and the EVAP solenoid hose. Reconnect the fuse center power cable along with the red wire from the Magnuson wiring harness. Drill a small hole in the back wall of the fuse center and run the yellow wire from the harness through it. Pass the legs of the M25 fuse through the integrated fuse tap and reinstall the fuse in the panel. Connect the black ground wire from the harness to the passenger side body ground. Here is a shot of the wiring run and all zip tied up neatly. Using a 3 8 inch extension, lever the belt tensioner to remove the factory belt. Mount the supplied idler pulley to the boss above the power steering pump. Install the new belt following the diagram and the instructions. Install the two air box mounting brackets and push in the rubber grommets as shown and reinstall the power steering reservoir in its stock location. Drill a 1 quarter inch hole in the side of the air box as shown and install the tie anchor and a zip tie in the hole. Trim the existing PCV hose barb on the air box down to 3 quarter inch. Trim the short end of the factory PCV 90 degree elbow hose down to leave 3 quarters inch of hose on the inside of the curve. Push it onto the air box. Push the air box base onto the grommets ensuring that they engage and hold the box in position. Install the air box lid along with the PCV hose which will be secured to the side of the air box using the previously installed zip tie. I attached the free end of the PCV hose to the breather hose prior to this step. I waited to install the throttle body until this point. Remove the tape and place the liberplate plate covered gasket in the groove. Install the throttle body using the four provided bolts and connect the provided throttle body control plug extension. Install the connection holder to the front of the supercharger as shown. Install the provided air tube on the air box and throttle body using the OEM clamps. Carefully place the battery into the new battery box. Be careful not to disconnect or damage any wiring when doing so. Install the included battery hold down bracket. Fill the system up with a 50-50 mixture of coolant and distilled water. After reconnecting all of the electrical to the battery, use the Diablo tuner to install the tune you received from Magnuson. Here is a shot of the motor with the complete kit installed. It is actually running perfect in this picture, you just can't tell. I am extremely happy with the results I have seen with this system. Now that I have put a few thousand miles on the kit, including a trip to Vegas for SEMA, I can definitely say that the power output is awesome and makes this Jeep feel like a much stronger rig despite the 40 inch tires. Keep an eye on JK Adventure for updates on this installation and other helpful installation videos and write ups. Thanks for watching.